celebrate you. I celebrate you, Marek, and I honor you. Amen. I celebrate you because you have still kept that other people don't have. You are nurses. You are chefs. You are um, um, singers. You know, when singers cannot sing, but I know people will sing them to sleep. You are psychiatrists. You know, when, when, when your child comes home from school or you see that something is going wrong, you do everything, everything you can to find out what is going on. So you are psychiatrists. You know, what? you are teachers as well. You know what? The moment you catch your child doing something wrong, what do you do? You scream at them. Yes, yes, yes. And you are prayer warriors because you pray over your children, don't you? And you are singers. You surely sang your backing song for who does it? Yes. You sing that and deserve it. Yes. And then Zionists as well. You when you're little and you go to the chapel, was it much for that much? You sing all that. Yes. And I tell you, motherhood is the only job I know that she gets to start doing it, the job that she gets onto, and then later on they find out what the job description is. Yes. And so once you're able to kind of get up, you just find out how to go along and then you do it. But anyway, I salute you because this is something that we don't give up on. Whatever it takes to make things work for our children, isn't it? Yes. God bless you, and I salute you all. Amen? Amen. However, I must say today's message is not just for mothers. It is for everyone who is facing a crisis or going through a difficult time. And if I say that we are going through a difficult time, I don't know what it is. Yeah? So um, bear with me, uh, mothers, there is a message just for you, but for everybody in the house, there is a message too. So we're going to look. We're going to look at um, people who faced real crisis in their day, and they saw Jesus was out of it. Amen? Amen? These people, I call them unstoppable. They were unstoppable in their faith, and they put through obstacles that they had to be able to get to Jesus. And even today, we are fighting an unknown enemy, as we said, um, that we are trying to eliminate. We can't see it. His name is coronavirus. We can't see it, but it is there, and we refuse to have it. So it has taken, coronavirus has taken life, and the numbers that keep popping up in the news or on, on the news feed that we see are not just numbers of figures. They are real human beings that their lives have been cut short unexpectedly. And as a result of that, families are grieving, and they are grieving, and they are grieving. So right now, I just want to pray for anyone who knows someone whose um, family has lost someone through coronavirus or through any other illness, because it seems like if it's not coronavirus this time, they need to lose a loved one if it's not health. Or maybe it could even be that even at this time, some of you are grieving because your mother is no longer alive and you're celebrating Mother's Day, don't have any mother left. Or maybe you even had a mother but you didn't have that motherly love, or that mother didn't have a motherly love to your birth, and you don't enjoy Mother's Day, and that is giving your heart again. So, Father, right now, I bring everyone under this category into your hands. Father, those who have lost loved ones ahead of a family who has lost a dad, uh, possibly a mother, and I think three others in the house through coronavirus. Father, other people have, have suddenly lost loved ones through maybe accidents, whatever it is. Father, people are celebrating Mother's Day, but they cannot because their mothers are not here for them to meet. Father, I bring all these people before you. And I pray the peace, Father, that is around them right now. I pray the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to surround your heart and grant you perfect peace right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And Father, be the comforter of those, Father God, who are grieving the Lord, the death, the death of their loved ones is so raw in their grieving right now. Father, grant them peace. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we come to we come to Jesus for answers because there is nothing that he cannot do. Amen? Amen. There is nothing that he cannot do. And um, he healed and he delivered. And at the mention of the name Jesus, the lame walk, the blind see, let the flesh cleanse, the dead hear. And the dead are raised to life. Amen? Amen. And as we look at these people in the Bible and we read of their situations as they turned around, I need you to remember that the God that we serve is a God of the now. He didn't only heal as we go to read in the Bible, He still heals today. Amen? Amen. He didn't only deliver in those days, He still delivers today. He didn't only raise the dead dead, He still raises the dead today. 
and we had experienced these things in our ministry in SSG in Southeast Baptist Church. They were over here. We are transforming lives. We are teaching people, and we are growing in the supernatural power of God. Amen. Amen. And all the black folk who saw that he brought he didn't read in the Bible, and he is pouring it out on us today. Amen. Amen. So all we need, all we need, is an unstoppable mindset for you to be able to receive the benefits of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us look at some people with unstoppable mindsets that boldly came to Jesus by faith and they received, they heard back and they received healing. We're going to look at Mark chapter 5. We're going to look at verses 21 to 33 and I'm going to proceed it. So Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 33. I'll read from the um, New King James Version. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came to, um, came to him, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him. Amen? Amen. Let's go there for a minute. Um, as I read this passage in Mark chapter, uh, chapter 5 verses 21 to 33, I was struck by how many times it says um, a great multitude or crowd. A great multitude of crowd will be two things. As we go to the NBC, we have we have to read of two people, only two, who called out to Jesus in that crowd. And today I want to say, whether you're here or listening to this online, I want to say, don't be like the crowd that came to Jesus. They were just there, they were looking to see what was going to happen. And some of the people just come to church and they sit there very well, and they just wait to see what is going to happen. But these two actually cried out to Jesus. And the thing is, Jesus talks to them. Jesus will talk to you any time that you cry out to him. So as you're here and you're hearing what I'm going to say, be crying out. In between what I'm saying, be crying out to Jesus because he's here. You. Amen? Amen? Because that's what it is. You may think, oh, maybe so many people are crying out, so we can't join it. Well, there are many people who are praying to Jesus right now, and you just say, Tommy, how is he doing that? Yeah? So he will hear you right now if you cry out to him. So if you're looking at Jairus, a synagogue ruler, or let's say he was a leader in the church, as we sat here in the church, and um, he did not allow his position um, to stop him from worshiping Jesus. And sometimes we allow what we have, or we allow who we are, or we, uh, we, uh, we allow who we think we are, or we allow our, 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 our um, uh, degrees or certification or the cars we drive or the houses we live in or the food we eat sometimes even to stop us from worshiping Jesus. But this man Jairus did not allow his position to prevent him from coming to Jesus because we read that falling at Jesus' feet, he said to him, it says, um, and he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly because there were people around. It says there was a great multitude. So it's not as though he pulled Jesus to the prayer room on the side and then he went down on his knees and said, he comes now. He did that in front of everybody. He was shameless. He was humble. He came with great humility and reverence and he said, please come here. And Jesus came. Jesus is always first in these situations. Falling at the feet of Jesus is worship. What we were doing earlier is worship. When we worship, what you're saying to God, what you say to Jesus is, you are sovereign. You are first in my life. Nothing matters, matters other than you. And therefore, I will give you everything. When you worship in humble position, be it your hands are up in the air, or you go on your knees, or whatever, your eyes are closed, whatever it is, you say, Lord, I care about nobody other than you. You are sovereign in my life. But when you come to Jesus that way, it is not so. Amen? So he comes to Jesus, he falls at his feet, he petitions him, and Jesus got up immediately and followed him. When you go and look at Psalm 23, it says, 
talk about the law this morning. The law this morning says, if you apply law, you are in every sin. Now, I'm going to give you a scenario regarding Psalm 23. Have you ever seen a thief sitting down, thinking deeply, thinking evil? Now, I thought yesterday, that in the day of Friday, when I went over and began to speak to you, it worried. Now, I see it worrying, thinking that whatever I've done is beginning to happen. Where on earth am I going to find myself again? Have you ever come across that in your life? The Lord is your shepherd. He will lead you to green pastures because you should never, ever, ever, ever worry about anything like that. Because it is the shepherd's duty to lead the sheep to where there is food. It is the shepherd's duty to make sure that wherever the sheep is feeding, there is water for it to drink. Amen? And therefore, when you worship and you make God sovereign, he can Lord do everything in my life. He says, okay, in that case, I'm going to fulfill my role and I'm going to give you what you need. Hallelujah. And therefore, what, that is what worship does. So that's what Jared did when he came and his friend I did this with him. He said, is that the time you are giving him to do? That's what it is. That's what it is. And I'm saying today, as you sat here, be praying and God will give you what it is that you're looking for. Because when you do Psalm 23, it says that he restores, he restores my soul. Amen. And the soul, the soul, see when you become a Christian, your spirit is, is, um, is renewed, but your soul is not. And what restores your soul, what renews your soul, is human healing and deliverance. And God knows that the soul needs. So that's why He says, I will restore your soul. And we as the church, that's why, we, that is why we put people through human healing and deliverance. Because your soul is where your emotions and your will sit. So when you have a bereavement, you lost your dad maybe 10 years ago, or your mother maybe 20 years ago, sometimes the pain is so raw. It is in your heart. Or maybe words that people have spoken. Um, over you, it could be that your loved one, it could be your partner, your ex-girlfriend, your, your tutor, said maybe you never amount to anything, and those words are still in your head, and you're a grown person, you're an executive in your job, and so you're doing a job, and you're sitting there thinking, sitting there thinking, maybe I don't amount to nothing, because those words are still in your head. You know what actually released you from that, what delivered you from that, that is human healing and deliverance. That is why God says, Hallelujah. Amen. And God knows that it's good for you. He will restore your soul. So come boldly to Jesus and face and face your face, rather. Come boldly to Jesus and face your face. Because Jairus was very direct. He did not beat about the bush. And let me teach you something about prayer. When you come to prayer, don't say you are fighting for fighting what? What you would say? Faith. Your faith. Blind Bartimaeus or, or the blind one of the blind man came to Jesus, Jesus and said, Help me. He said, and the person who brought before Jesus and Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And as I read that, I'm thinking, Jesus, you can see that the person standing before you is blind, and you ask me, you ask him, what can I do for him? Of course he wants to see. When you come to Jesus, Jesus needs you to face your faith. So Jairus came to Jesus, and he was very specific. He did not beat about the bush. He fell at his feet, and he begged him earnestly, saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she will be healed. Amen? Amen? Have an unstoppable mindset. Come to Jesus, and he will, he will answer your heart cry. Do not allow the fear, do not allow whatever is before you to stop you from coming to Jesus, because Jesus is able to do above and beyond what you ask for. Amen? Amen. So, um, as a mother, I will say, come boldly to Jesus and face your face. If you're parents, come boldly to Jesus and face your faith. If you're a young adult, come boldly to Jesus and face your faith. Because you read that the girl actually died, but Jesus raised her back to life. Amen? Amen. Had Jairus not gone to Jesus, he would have buried his little girl. You need to come to Jesus with whatever it is you have. Because the Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 32, Jeremiah chapter 32, Verse 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for me? I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for me? Have an unstoppable mindset. Come to Jesus boldly and face your faith. No matter how desperate it is, no matter how critical it is, Jesus will hear you. Jairus' daughter, as I said, lay dying, and um, he came and he brought 
Because when he did it, it was Sarah who did it, and Jacob got whatever it is that he was doing. Because when Jacob was going, he didn't say, oh, I'm going to die at this house. He was going somewhere. But when Sarah petitioned him, he dropped what he was doing, and he followed her. See, if you drop what you're doing and come at you to your end, if you will call out to him, but you need to call out to him. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3 says, Call to me, call to me, and I will answer. I will answer you and tell you and even show you great and mighty things. Things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you, I will show you. At the time that Jairus went to, to Jesus, I don't know if he knew that it was possible for the debt to be raised. But he went. Yeah. And his debt was raised back to life. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yours is to call. Jesus will do the rest for you. Yeah. Don't worry about how he's going to do it. Leave that how to him. Yeah. Yours is to call. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah? Yeah. Okay, let's continue with Mark chapter 5. We continue from verse 24b to the end to 33, Mark 5, 24b. And it says, and a great multitude, there it is again, a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah? Amen. Amen. Well, here is a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 solid years. She had used up all her savings in an attempt to cure her sickness. But she didn't get better. She only grew worse. She grew worse until her money ran out. So she now was not only poor in health, but she was poor financially. This disease that she had for 12 years was not only weakening and wasting, it only rendered her ceremonially unclean and shut her out from the courts of the Lord's house. I'll give you a reference to read um, and I'll explain it to you. Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 15, um, verse 19 and 25. Leviticus 15, 19 and 25. It talks about um, being ceremonially unclean, but let me explain what it means um, from Ashley's Bible commentary. It says the law in Leviticus explains that abnormal discharges um, makes a person unclean for as long as the discharge lasts, and this is for both men and women. Okay, anything of any person that comes close to the area of the discharge becomes secondarily unclean. A male or female with an abnormal discharge can be reinstated into community. Now, this is what the law says. I'm reading the law now. A male or female with an abnormal discharge can be reinstated into community life after full recovery from the defilement because one's illness is out of the ordinary. Sacrifices are required. After recovering, one has to wait seven days to be sure recovery is complete. That person washes his clothes or her clothes and bathes in water. On the eighth day, one brings two doves or two pigeons, that is the least expensive sacrifice, to the priest at the tent of meeting. He or she offers one as a burnt offering and one as a sin offering. Then the person is fully reinstated into the community. That is the law. But here's what Jesus did. 
Jesus does away with these laws on impurity from sexual discharges. He dramatically demonstrates his power over the sickness that the woman was going through. And as soon as she touched the hem of his garment, she was made whole. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus did away with the long law that I read to you. Amen. Yeah. When you come to Jesus, he does away with anything that puts you to shame because she was she was ceremonially unclean and she was put to shame. So she was hiding behind closed doors, but she was unstoppable because she did not allow her shame to keep her indoors. She yes. came out. Yes. So whatever that is putting shame on you that you think you cannot come to Jesus, throw it away today and come to Jesus because he's waiting for you. Yes. Anything that humiliates you, anything that binds you, anything that um, oppresses you, when you come to Jesus, he will roll that away for you because that is who he is. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be unstoppable. Be unstoppable. This woman knew the law, but she was unstoppable. She placed a demand on Jesus' anointing, and she, by faith, went and touched the hem of his garment. Because remember, when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, we hadn't read anywhere. We didn't know anywhere that anybody had done that before. She did that by faith. So today I'm asking you, step out by faith and come to Jesus regardless of what is facing you right now. Amen? Amen. You may be dealing with an issue, but definitely not a problem. The issue may have established itself for a very long time. It may have drained you, weakened you, left you penniless, drained your confidence, or embarrassed you so much that you have gone into hiding. It could be coronavirus that has put so much fear into you that you don't know what to do. I'm saying don't, know that, don't let the fear or whatever it is that has been holding you back for so many years. Her years was 12 years. Yours could be more or less, but not, don't let it hold you back. Be unstoppable and reach out to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Remember that what we have been learning in the past few weeks is that we, if we have enough faith, we can command whatever mountain we are facing to move into the sea and it will move into the sea. Amen. Amen. And just to give you the reference, in case you are forgetting it, and I pray you don't, Matthew chapter 21, verses 21 to 22, it says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Assure you, or truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So right now I need you to begin to think, what is that mountain that is facing you? What is that crisis that is facing you? What is that critical situation that is facing you? Because in a moment, we're going to start praying to cast that mountain into the sea. Amen. We're going to bring that crisis before Jesus because we've seen Jairus who came and fell at Jesus' feet. And did Jesus turn Jairus away? No. Is Jesus going to turn you away? No. When, when the woman with the issue of blood, who was not supposed to go near people, let alone touch the high priest. Jesus is a great high priest. Let alone do that. She went by faith. And Jesus affirmed her faith. So when we come to Jesus by faith, he will affirm our faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus did not disgrace her and Jesus is not going to disgrace you. Jesus did not turn Jairus away. Jesus is not going to turn you away. Even if your situation is dead, like Jairus' daughter died, we can pray it to come back to life because Jesus has given us authority over life and death because he says that if we believe, we will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. We have seen it happen in this church. Hallelujah. And it will happen again. So whatever situation that you are facing right now, I need you to begin to pray about it. Even as I'm speaking right now, begin to pray about it because we're going to pray. We're going to bring it to Jesus. More often than not, we spend time looking for solutions from other places. And when it doesn't work, then we turn to Jesus. This woman spent all her money. She spent everything she had. Physicians spent all her money. And then when her money ran out, they told her that her disease is incurable. Hallelujah. Yeah. She heard that Jesus was passing by, um, but she had a problem, as I told you. She was unclean. She had to push through the multitude to get to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So today I'm saying, push through your unbelief. 
push through whatever that is facing you. Push through what people have said to you that it will not work. If it is marriage that is failing, push through what um, what they have said that maybe after such and such a time it is going to fail. Push through that. If it is sickness, begin to say that my God is able and the God who healed Jairus' daughter can heal me. The God who yeah. actually, um, when, when, when um, um, the woman touched the, uh, the hem of Jesus' garment, the same Jesus can heal me. That is the same Jesus that we are praying. We remember at the beginning when I started, I said, what we read about in the Bible is not just for those times, it is for the now. now. Amen? Amen? And the benefits that God pours, uh, we read that God pours upon his people, he's pouring it upon you right now. So all you need is faith. Mothers, be unstoppable. Amen. Mothers, be unstoppable. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And parents be unstoppable. Young Amen. adults be unstoppable in pushing through whatever obstacle is before you right now and state your case before Jesus. Right now, as a nation, we are going through a pandemic because, because we don't know where, where this enemy is. But this enemy is taking lives, as I said. I don't know what the number stands at right now, but I know it is increasing. But what I'm going to say is continue to follow the government's medical scientific guidelines as appropriate and do what they're asking you to do and we are going to do what the Bible teaches us to do. Yes. We are going to cry out, uh, cry out to God right now because we know that when we cry, he will hear us. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We learned on, on Wednesday at Megaphone that fear is a tormenting spirit. Yes. And we heard this morning, just, uh, Monica said that God has not given us, he, she quoted from um, 2 Timothy 1, 7, I believe it is. God has not given us the spirit of fear, yeah. but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 